All right, so we've come to the last group of animals for the year, and that is mammals. When we think of animals, we typically think of mammals because, you know, we're mammals. And our pets are mammals for the most part, not always, but for the most part, cats and dogs. So we're going to look at some general characteristics of mammals. Then we'll look at mammal evolution and then the different orders of mammals and some later videos. So there's some mammals. Of course, I needed to put a picture of a bear in there. And there's another little guy, whatever he is. Mammals are mostly covered with hair. This is one of their defining characteristics, but the hair can be reduced in some, if not absent. They have an integument or a skin that has sweat glands. They can have scent glands, and these are glands that um, can produce scent, can produce odors. Sebaceous glands, which are like an oil gland. Mammary glands. Mammary glands are used to feed their young. Mammals also have a layer of fat right underneath the skin. And you can see that here. It's called the subcutaneous fat. And the purpose of subcutaneous fat is to protect the body temperature. The mammalian skull has two occipital condyles. Remember, these are the connection points in the back of the skull. They're called occipital because that occipital portion of our brain is also in the rear. They have a secondary palate, and this secondary palate um, separates our nasal passages from our mouth, which allows us to eat and breathe at the same time. We have, I don't think I have any pictures of these things. Maybe I do. All right, so in our nasal passages, it's right here on the right, there are bones called turbinate bones. And these turbinate bones, T-U-R-B-I-N-A-T-E, act to uh, provide a lot of surface area in the nose so that when we breathe in through our nose, the air can be warmed before it goes into the uh, lungs. On the inside of the skull, the middle ear has three ossicles, is what these are called. This is, forms our uh, middle ear, part of our hearing structure. We have seven cervical vertebrae. This is the vertebrae of the neck. All mammals have seven cervical vertebrae, even drafts. And the pelvic bones of mammals are all fused. There are three different pelvic bones all fused in mammals. The mouth of mammals have what are called, have this anywhere, okay, uh, diphodont teeth, D-I-P-H-Y-O-D-O-N-T. Um, and diphodont teeth are teeth that we lose. And so we're all familiar with this. We call them baby teeth and permanent teeth. In reality, those first teeth are what are called milk teeth. And these are the teeth that are replaced by a more permanent set of teeth later on in life. The teeth are also called heterodont, and heterodont um, teeth in most animals, meaning that as the teeth go back in the mouth, those teeth have different purposes. You think about our own mouths. Um, we have chomping teeth, we have crushing teeth, and this uh, jaguar skull here, you can see that their teeth pretty much all have the same purpose which is tearing meat, this elephant tooth here, again, the same purpose for all of their teeth, and elephants end up only having one giant tooth later in life, and their uh, purpose of that tooth is to grind food. But this bear here, or this is not a bear, this is a hippo, this hippo, as you can see, it has um, heterodont teeth, because there's some teeth back here for uh, crushing, you know, the vegetation that it might eat, and then there's some teeth up here for uh, slaying its enemies. So uh, mammals also have movable eyelids, and so we're able to open and close our eyes, protect our eyes as well, and we have an outer ear 
structure called a pinna, P-I-N-N-E-A-E, and this is the uh, the fleshy part of the outer ear allows us to hear, and you know some animals are able to direct their hearing, you know like a dog. When it hears something, it will perk its ears up, and it's trying to hear better is basically what it's trying to do. Mammal circulation, four-chambered heart, two atria, two ventricles, um, just like red, or just like birds, for their red blood cells, they have non-nucleated red blood cells, and so their blood cells do not have a nucleus, which is interesting. For the respiratory system, they have uh, lungs, and in their lungs, there are structures called alveoli, which I don't have a picture of. And these alveoli, alveoli are tiny little sacs that uh, increase the surface area of the lungs. We talked about the secondary palate again. The secondary palate, again, separates the air passages from the food. So while you're chewing your food, you can breathe. Mammals have a muscular diaphragm under their lung cavity, and this allows them to to breathe into their, that's a more of an involuntary function. Uh, excretory system, before we talk about brain, metanephric kidney opens into a bladder. The bladder's purpose is to store urine for, you know, uh, getting rid of the urine when you want to, like a dog peeing at the park. Um, not so much for purpose in our own species because, you know, we don't mark territory. And if we did, you wouldn't be able to tell because our, senses are different now. Speaking of that, the brain in mammals is highly developed. Even the most primitive types of mammals have a highly developed brain. Uh, the cerebral cortex of the brain, the thinking portion, is particularly highly developed. Uh, for many mammals, the olfactory portion of the brain, which is smelling, is one of the most developed portions. Our own olf olfactory uh, portions are not as well developed as say like a dog that you know lives its whole life off smelling bears very similar to that uh, mammals are endothermic meaning that we uh, are able to hold body temperature just by having homeostasis um, memory glands these are found in females of the species and the purpose of mammary glands is to nourish young. Mammals have separate sexes and these are determined by chromosomes whereas the male is heterogametic meaning that the male has the XY chromosome. It's actually the opposite in birds. Birds, the female is heterogametic. Males are, mammals have internal fertilization in which the embryo develops internally except for in a few groups there are some groups that actually lay eggs only a couple of these uh, are in existence we'll talk more about those uh, in another lecture and then some animals are marsupials in which they have a pouch and so mo but for most mammals they are placental which is an attachment inside the female that allows the developing young to receive nourishment inside and develop inside the uh, mother.